Hey guys, good to see you. First of all, thank you for checking out this video. I value your time just as much as you do, so I'd like to start off this video by being really clear about two things straight from the get-go. The first is that when I started to make this video, I did not have the intention of creating a review video for the Zero Shoes Naboso. I now wear minimalist barefoot style shoes in just about every aspect of my life, with one significant exception, and that is climbing up mountains. I began making this video with the intention to answer a question I've been asking myself for quite a long time, and that is, can I climb a Scottish Monroe or mountain in the most minimalist barefoot style shoes that I own? And in this case, that just happens to be the Zero Shoe Naboso. So this meant that on the day, on the mountain, I naturally ended up speaking about the Zero Shoes Naboso quite a lot of the time and unintentionally ended up creating what is more or less a review for the Zero Shoes Naboso and certainly a review and insight into what it's like to climb up a Scottish Monroe in minimalist footwear. The second thing that I want to be upfront about, and I hope that you don't mind me to some extent spoiling the ending of this video, but it is that at the very end of this hike, I actually did sprain my ankle wearing the Zero Shoe Naboso. So if you're interested in barefoot culture, or maybe even you're thinking about buying your first pair of minimalist shoes and you're just interested to see where that journey might take you. Maybe you're just interested in getting rid of the big heavy mountain boots or maybe guys you just want to see me sprain my ankle and that's totally fine too. I hope you find something in the video that you enjoy and I'll speak to you a bit more afterwards. As we fill up the car and head north, I just want to mention that I did take two pairs of backup shoes with me on this trip in case the Naboso became too difficult to walk in. Shown here in some of the outtakes from the day are the Vibram Five Fingers V Train and the Zero Shoes Denver. I'll be mentioning them a few times throughout the video, so I'm just letting you know now to avoid any confusion later. So far so good with the with the zeros. I wanted to show you before, but basically like this is the texture of, of the shoe. It's like really like lumpy bumpy and really quite hard. There's no give in these soles whatsoever. Like they don't compress. It's really nice to walk through the streams where the burns, the streams cross the path. That is just the best bit. What I'm finding is that like little tiny stones and grains, bits of sand are like getting in between my foot and the sole of the shoe. And and I think that over time, if I don't keep washing those out, that it's gonna it's gonna have a kind of an effect on my on the skin of my foot that might reduce how long I could be comfortably walking on the soles of my feet for. The only downside of walking in the stream or like continuously wetting my feet like that, I think, is that it's gonna soften the skin and just make my feet softer and again more susceptible to damage from just from the walking really to abrasion and and to all the other enemies of feet out here. Another thing that's quite nice is when you step on a rock your foot has to like fold the sandal gives way fully over the rock and your foot your entire foot kind of bends and molds to the shape of the rock so it gets your ankle twisting in different directions and and it also like massages the sole of the foot and gets like right into the into the sole of the foot and in amongst the bones and, and all of the tissues in there and that might start to sound like a bad thing but actually it feels really good and it's just a completely different experience from having your your foot like held in that that same position inside a boot like absolutely solid and only able to kind of twist a little bit and your ankles like you know held like really firmly and it gets this little bit of flex it's so different compared to the like the great feeling that you get when you're when you're walking around in your bare feet so anyway the the shoes, the Vibram 5s and the Zero shoes, the Denvers, they are very firmly still 
in my bag and will be staying so for the next little while. I am going to take it as it comes, but so far, so good. Let's go up there. That is a nice boulder. I like what you're doing with that. It's a real nice boulder. Look at that boulder. Shrek, you put that boulder there. Is that you? <laughs> Uh, so I've had my first little niggle in my right foot. Basically like at the base of the pinky finger, the little, uh, like that little ball of the foot at the base of the pinky finger, uh, the pinky, the pinky toe. It's not much, it's just like, it's just letting me know that it's there a little bit. Um, for the most part, my feet have been amazing. I'm basically on the summit ridge of Ben Dorian just now. And yeah, I, I can't, um, I have to admit I'm a little bit shocked, very surprised and very, very pleased. I'm well up above the, the height of the streams now, so there's not really that opportunity to keep cleaning my feet. And I was finding over the last few minutes that there's a lot of sand and stuff like building up in, in, my, in my sandals underneath the soles of my feet. And, and that definitely starts to make a difference after a few minutes walking there. Um, I started to become quite aware of the sole of my right foot and I had to stop and use some of my very precious water uh, to clean the sole of that foot but it's actually gotten, it feels a lot better since I did that I'm pleased I did it and there's plenty of streams and stuff when I get back down towards the Bialach uh, so yeah, a few more minutes I'll be at the top of Ben Doreen and I'll be feeling pretty sweet I am standing on the summit of Ben Dory, and would you just look at that? You know, even if my feet were in pain the entire walk, boots or sandals, to come here and stand on the top of a mountain on a perfectly clear day, just surrounded by mountain tops, is just, it's just amazing. It is, it is worth every single step that it takes to get you up here. So a quick couple of words on the feet then. They are still attached and feeling strong. Now I was talking earlier, basically right in under under this uh, this knuckle here. So right in under the pinky finger, pinky toe. I keep saying finger, but you know what? They are fingers. Oh, like a little creature. Hello, little creature. Hello. Anyway, um, yeah, so under there it was for a bit, kind of giving me a bit of trouble, but then it stopped. I can feel the difference that just that 10, 15 minutes of having sediment on the sole of my foot has made to, to just how eroded the skin on the sole of my foot has become. It's definitely reduced the endurance of the foot. And I don't think it's going to be like, I mean, famous last words, right? I don't think it's going to be a major problem going back down. I am like obviously prepared to pull out the, the backup shoes if I need to, but I don't think it's going to come to that. Um, the foot still does feel good. They are feeling strong. My legs are feeling strong. Um, Honestly, I, I, I am feeling like massively surprised by how well my feet have, have stood up to this. So, so far, experiment is going well. a lot about how my feet have held up but to bring this on to the sandals themselves the zero shoes the naboso i have to say they are quite slippy on the downhill you see this sort of stuff i'm going down here it's like lots of loose rocks and like little stones and my feet are actually like they're quite wet from just from well from all the little streams and the swampy bits and all that kind of stuff so my feet slide on the soles of the shoe 
and the sandal, the soles of the sandals themselves are not particularly grippy. They're not like, they've not got kind of teeth, if you know what I mean. From the perspective of the feet and the legs, they are actually, they're actually really great. Uh, you can use, again, you can just use your foot properly. You know, you can extend your, you can extend your foot like, like that. You don't, you're not like relying on your heel. When you're, when you're just going down and like thudding your heel into the ground and each foot just thump, 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 then it doesn't really allow any shock absorption from, from that kind of natural shock absorber of the ankle and the knee as you're going down. Sure, you can bend your knee still, but the, the first point of contact really as you're going downhill is that the ball of the foot and in boots you just don't really have so much that option because your ankle is just held so firmly. So I am, I am still enjoying going downhill in them. I'm just having to be really aware of how slippy they can be. So definitely going to make the trip in the sandals. Feeling really good about them, but there are some drawbacks, especially on the downhill. And as for the feet, they're getting pretty tender, even more so now that I'm having to like drop down onto the ball of the foot. That's really the first point of contact with the floor and it, it, it makes a big difference actually. I just wanted to check in one last time before the final kind of, we're like 10 minutes away from the car at this point. Um, still in the sandals. I don't know if you can see them, but they are just swarming everywhere. Ah, the Scottish midgey. See that white house like right there? That is literally like uh, right beside the car. So I got two walking sticks. Cameraman is very kindly holding my bag and I'm going to very slowly start making my way down this hill. Hey guys, so as you saw, I was literally about 200 meters away from the car at the point where I sprained my ankle and had I not made a really bad decision to run down among those rocks at the very end of a seven and a half hour walking day when I had just put my feet and my ankles and my legs through the equivalent of a marathon as far as I'm concerned. At least it was something I had never done before. It was an entirely new and difficult and arduous experience for me. And for some reason, I made the very misguided decision to go for a little jog at the end. And as you saw, that did not end very well for me. Now, in conclusion, I think that hiking in minimalist footwear, even climbing mountains like I just did, can be a safe, fun, exciting, very freeing experience. However, I think it's really important that you do stay aware of your own limits, the limits to your ability, the limits of your experience, how far along your own barefoot journey that you are, how strong your ankles, how strong are your feet. If you're going to do this, and if I do this in the future, it is so important to constantly be assessing the decisions that you're making. If you're thinking about doing something like jogging down the hill, for example, ask yourself the question, how are my ankles and my feet feeling right now? How long have I been walking for? Is this really the most sensible decision I can make? Honestly, if I had taken 30 seconds to ask myself a few of these questions, then I would have made a very different decision. At least I like to think I would have. Certainly at this point, knowing what I've now put myself through, I would definitely be reconsidering the decision to go for a wee jog. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to support the channel by giving me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I'd be only too happy to hear from you. And I hope to see you all soon. Until next time, guys, have fun. Keep wiggling those little toes and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.